In this week's video, I give feedback to a ton of my subscribers. What up, mini family? A little bit ago, I put a poll out on my YouTube community asking you guys if you wanted me to roast your miniature paint jobs. And while the majority of the responses said yes, and 85 of you sent in pictures for me to roast, y'all are sadistic, there were a few comments on the polls that had some good points about maybe why I should consider not doing it. But just so I don't waste your guys' time, I'm gonna give feedback to a ton of these people right now. And because it's easy content, I'm gonna try to give unique feedback on every single miniature, but that means that not every single model is gonna get the full length of feedback, but just listen to the whole video and you can probably figure out what applies to you and what doesn't apply to you. Number one is Opar with his Salamander Space Marine. And the first thing I noticed when I was looking at this Space Marine is that the model is leaning forward. And this can kind of happen with Space Marines that have certain leg positions you kind of have to rotate their torsos so it's kind of facing you when it's level with the ground. And this goes for all miniatures. You wanna make sure that the model has a good viewing angle so you can see it appropriately. Like if you did a lot of cool freehand on that banner and the model was leaning forward and you couldn't see it when it was on the tabletop and you were kind of standing a little bit higher, that'd be a real shame. So make sure you kind of angle your models and they have a good viewing angle for people to appreciate. The next image comes from Daniel and it is a Tyranid and I see two things we can give feedback on and the first item is one that's probably going to apply to a lot of people in regards to color schemes you have a nice vibrant purple green and yellow going on and, and to me these colors kind of fight for attention I think on another tier net you should experiment with taking the purple skin tone and reducing it in saturation to a color like Damon at Hyde from the games workshop paint range that would kind of give more visual space to the yellow and to the green and kind of not make it as gaudy. It's not super gaudy as it currently is, but it's kind of getting there a little bit. And the second feedback is that the, the head blood stuff kind of looks like raspberry jelly a little bit. If his head just got ripped out, that would be splattering everywhere. Maybe the blood would kind of be darker in certain areas because of viscera and other organs that were kind of ripped out. And maybe there'd be a spinal column hanging from his head or, or in his neck socket, something like that. Instead of just kind of like a, a pool kind of just like thing out. You know what I mean? These people volunteer to be roasted. So if I'm a little bit harsh, they wanted this. Next up, we have a Knight Titan from Clone Boy 69 LMAO. The problem I see with this model is that there is kind of wash pooling in a lot of areas. And there can be a desired effect sometimes to make your model look kind of dirtier. But the problem with a method like this is that while it may look dirty, it also looks like a hobby mistake. There are other ways of making your model look dirty without also making it look like you might have made a mistake with applying a wash, like pooling it on too much or something like that. For instance, using dry pigments or using oil paints to have little drips and stains and stuff like that. And that can kind of give you a good rusty, dirty look without also looking like you were kind of just sopping on the wash. So be careful about your wash application. Make sure you kind of dab up a lot of wash in flat areas with a wet, clean brush just to make sure it's all nicely distributed. Dear Scott, blast me, regards. Next up, we have Giacomo, who sent me an Imperial Fist, and you know, it's a very well-painted model. You should be proud, Giacomo, but where is the basing material, my dude? You got a black base and a beautifully painted miniature in such a disservice. You gotta finish that base, my dude! YouTube, what are you doing in here? Well, while I have your attention, let me tease a little release that's coming out on Black Friday that is very special and a little bitey.
That's all for now. You have to wait until Black Friday to figure out the rest of the info. Back to the video. Next up, we got Jake's Blood Angel, and he says, Roast me, Daddy. <laughs> First thing I noticed is that there's a texture all over this miniature, and I'm gonna guess that probably came from this model possibly being a fine cast model, but it looks older, which means it would be pewter. And I don't remember a lot of pewter models having texture all over it. If that's the case, you might have to worry about the undercoat you're using. When I see a uniform texture all over the model like this, I gotta assume it's a problem with the undercoat because that touches every single part of the model. So make sure that the aerosol can is uh, a good distance from the model so the particles aren't drying mid-air and sticking on the model and then causing a physical texture. Next up, we got Tyler and a lovely gigantic bust. And the first thing that I'll say about this model is that this guy's got huge eyes and really all I see is yellow, a black pupil, and then a little eye reflection. With a bust and with eyes this large, you have so much room to work with. I would suggest doing something more fun, maybe adding in some red around the outside, like where the eyeball meets like the skull, and how it attaches to the skull, maybe having more of an intense yellow toward the middle. I can see a little bit of a transition, but you could do more with this much space. The beauty of painting in large scale is that you have more space to work with, and because of that more space, you can do more fun things. More fun things? This is what happens when you get unscripted, Scott. Sound like an idiot. Next one's from Ian, another space marine, looking like possibly we have a salamander or some successor chapter. A fun fact, one of my best friend's names is Ian. And this will be the first time, and probably the only time that I say this, and this probably applies to a lot of people. This model, I think, is in some need of some contrast. I see the green armor. It has a little bit of shading. It has some highlighting. I can see some brighter highlight on the knee pads. But I think it needs a lot more. So possibly a wash, possibly a recess paint with some dark black paint with some black ink mixed in to make it flow more. To learn more about that, you can watch the ink video up there. Also, the gun barrels aren't drilled out. Oh my God! Dude, everyone on Reddit would crucify you for that. You gotta draw the gun barrels. Not for anything else in miniature painting, just for Space Marines, okay? That's the only thing that matters. This one's from Matt Rayford, and I think this is a 15 millimeter model from... So this model is, is tiny. It's about like half the size of a primary Space Marine, just to put it into perspective. I like the texture you have going on on the, uh, on the skirt, but I think that probably the biggest problem that I have is with the eyes. There's no perimeter to the eyes. It's just white, black dot. So the way that you could paint eyes if you're looking to do it is to first paint a, a dark color, maybe a dark brown or a dark red, which is dark brown or a black if you wanted to do like an like an eyeliner kind of look and then paint white inside of it but don't cover up all of the black so it leaves kind of like a ring around the eyes and then paint in your pupil and the other part of the eye that has color or the, maybe the pupil is the part with color I, I can never remember next model is from someone called we look and i think probably the biggest problem with this model and a lot of models have this issue is that the entire model is very drab and desaturated and it looks like maybe he base coated a lot of it and then just hit it with a black wash and he kind of maybe applied another highlight to the the cloth on her arms and and her, and her legs, but I think it's in need of a nice poppy color, whether that's her skin tone, or maybe like, since it seems like a sci-fi model, you could give her kind of like a cool dyed hair color, like pink, or she could have like a streak of teal in her hair, or the cloth could be a nice bright green color, or the armor itself could have like cool designations on it, like, like a number, like she's in a certain squadron, or just like stripes, which are a lot easier to do and stuff like that. It, it needs something to kind of uh, enliven it, and you can oftentimes do that with just very saturated colors. And if you don't know what the word saturated means or contrast or all of these things, I have a video about miniature painting vocabulary that you should check out right up there that make this feedback more meaningful. All right, next one is a goblin from Ben. And probably the first comment I'm gonna have is unrelated to miniature painting, the white balance of this photo is off. It's worth learning how to white balance your camera based on what you have. If it's a phone, it 
does it automatically most of the time, but you can do it manually, probably not worth it. But if you have a, a nicer camera, just Google how to white balance my camera and you can get really nice color accurate images if you just learn how to do that. This model looks really nice. I love the spots on the mushrooms and the highlighting on the mushroom on the top. Uh, the Probably the one thing that I would give feedback on is the uh, the kind of dress skirt thing that he's wearing. Um, you might not have been trying to get black instead of going for like a dark gray, but I'm going to pretend in my mind that you were going for black and give feedback on this. Black is kind of a really tricky color to paint. You know, people complain about like reds and yellows and stuff like that, but for me, black is probably one of my most difficult colors to paint. And the reason why is because it's so hard to highlight without n making it look not black. You really need to be careful about how much gray and you know dark gray and, and bright gray you add to a black before it starts to read as something like dark gray as opposed to being black. Stuff that can help with that is uh, using a satin black in your shadows. Satin black tends to look deeper and richer than like a matte black color. Um, but yes, I, I don't know if you were going for black, but if you were, and if anyone is going for black, be really mindful about how much of the black thing you're painting is gray and, and bright gray. You really want to kind of shrink it down to, this is this, this means, this is kind of meaningless, but like 30% or 25% of the black thing should be mid gray. Everything else should be black or very, very dark gray. Otherwise it starts to kind of read as gray. Next up we got Zach and he painted a model called Cypher, which I can tell because it's very conveniently put on the base rim for me. One thing I'll say about this model is the edge highlighting, while it is pretty accurate, it follows the edge of the armor plate uh, pretty good. I'm looking at the shoulder plate right now. It is far too thick. Now, I will say this, when heavy metal paint stuff, they do it with multiple stages of edge highlighting. And right now, the edge highlight that you have on the black armor would be great for a color that's a little bit darker than the one that you chose. So that'd be like their first pass, that line width, but with a darker gray. Then their second edge highlight pass would be done with a brighter gray, but the line would be significantly thinner. And this is how you get kind of like your Tron style looking miniature that has all these kind of glowing edges because there's actually a transition in their edge highlights. It's not, it's not a blend, but just multiple edge highlights done at smaller and smaller line widths. By the way, like that would not be something I would do for a rank and file model. For a character like Cypher, I would consider doing it, but I would not do that for like a standard Primaris Space Marine. What do they call it? Something with an OR. It's like always, it's like Intercessor, uh, uh, Grenade Boy, <laughs> Hell Blaster. See, it's another one, er at the end. It's like Stormcast Eternals. They're like Judicators, Judgers, but uh, anything that ends in OR, ER. All right, next up we got a Nurgle Marine from Ashley. And I think probably the biggest thing about this model is that the whole chunk of him almost looks like the a very similar color progression. And this can happen sometimes when you use colors that are kind of similar in tonality and then wash them all the same tone. It really kind of ties them together. And so you don't get much differentiation between the metal and the kind of white armor that he has and stuff like that. So if you're looking to use kind of colors that are similar in tonality and you want to wash them, consider washing them with different tones to kind of pull them apart a little bit so you kind of get more contrast in the way of, I can tell where the armor ends, where the power armor ends and where the metal trim begins and, and stuff like that. I think the whole thing kind of blends together a little bit too much save for the green flame stuff, obviously. Dig the snow base though, that looks really cool. All right, the next one we have is a Emperor's Champion, Emperor's Children, uh, Terminator, Chaos Boy from Krom. This is gonna be a point of feedback for a lot of people that probably paint in a GW style. So you're kind of nailing the whole recess shade, kind of doing edge highlight look. And now I think the next thing that you can move on to is actually highlighting and shading this model 
zenithly like it would be if it was under a, you know a, a light source that's in the top of the sky midday zenithal light source and the way that you approach doing this is you consider each shape of the model and kind of reduce it to a basic shape that's easier to understand. And space marines are, are pretty simple because their legs and thighs and arms and, and biceps, like that's all just a cylinder. So that's pretty easy to interpret how light would hit it. Uh, the face of a Terminator is a bunch of kind of like flat panels. The shoulder is like a sphere that then comes down into a cylinder as it kind of elongates down the bicep. So one, you could watch this video, how to highlight almost everything to kind of get a better idea about where you should put your highlights and shadows. But yeah, step one, understand how to reduce a model to its basic shapes. That makes it a lot easier. And also, don't really stress a whole lot about exactly how it would look in a real life setting. Just having a cool gradient on something from light to dark oftentimes can really pep it up. You don't really need to have everything look like it would look in reality. This is an art form after all. It's not like we're trying to, you know, get the most accurate looking thing in the world. So like if you don't know exactly where the highlight would go on his little square forehead thing, just do like a bright to dark from top to bottom. Would that be realistic? No, it wouldn't, but it would still look cool and at the end of the day, Rule of cool is number one. I don't know when this video is going to come out, but it is the beginning of November, so we're going to start growing this puppy out again, so you know what that means. <laughs> All right, next we're going to give feedback to Matt for his... We're going to give feedback to the dwarf, because I don't know what the f*** that dog Thomas the Tank Engine thing is, but it is scaring me. This is probably true for a lot of things other than metallics, but I think for metallics, you should consider using different metallic colors. I know having to bust out multiple pots of paint can oftentimes increase how long it takes to paint something, but when a model like this dwarf has so much metal stuff on it, or at least you're interpreting a lot of it as metal, using exclusively silver, yeah, it can get a little bit kind of dull. So like maybe uh, interpret parts of it as gold or copper or bronze. Like for instance, his, his helmet has like trim on it, like around the side and down the middle, like a mohawk. You could paint that copper or bronze or the ax has some detail in the middle. You could paint that middle detail as a different metal. And that would kind of break up more parts of the model and make it look better. Where's the basic Nico? Where is it? I didn't see a black base. What's wrong with you? Do you know who I am? I'm the base god. This model has the basic material on it and you sent it in for me to look at it. Just put some rocks on it or something. We got a death corpse guy from Eddie here and the first thing I see is that dirty AF base rim, Eddie. Come on, man. How long will it take to take some black paint and paste that, paste? Paint that base rim and make it all nice and pretty. Come on, come on, guy. Next up we have a sepulchral guard from Joshua and just kind of like a, a helpful comment, if you want to do like glowy eyes on a skeleton, it's oftentimes a lot easier if you fill them in like kind of 85% of the way with some kind of putty like green stuff or epoxyscope, epoxyscope, epoxyscope or milliput, whatever you want to use. But if you fill it in, then it's easier to paint. You're not kind of trying to cram your brush down into the, the eye socket. Next up we got Steve and some kind of Chaos Beast thing. I think that came in the starter set for an old 40K thing. Um, you have this huge, huge ovular base and you put dirt on it and two clumps of static grass and maybe something else in the back here. This could have so many cool things on it. It could have barbed wire, it could have corpses of dudes, it could have different kinds of static grass, different kinds of dirt. Uh, all kinds of fun things and if you're in a rut and you can't think about like what you want to put on your base or what you want your base to look like just quick give your model a little backstory and that'll kind of inform where he is or where she's from and stuff like that and that can kind of help you with a little bit of creativity because you got so much space to work with use it use it use it all next up we got bar larks minis with a, a model that i haven't seen before but the one thing I'll comment on is the nails, the teeth, and the horn are all perfectly pure white. 
oftentimes when white kind of exists in reality, it is nowhere near pure white. It is only pure white in very small spots of highlight or specular highlight. So for things like the teeth and the horns, consider starting with maybe like an off-white. So it's kind of more yellowed or, or browned. Or, I mean, the, the beauty of white and also of black is that you can probably mix in like a small amount of literally any color you want. So if you want this guy to be more blue, you could do an off-white that's blue. You could do an off-white that's kind of more purple, more yellow, more brown, more red, more, more really anything. Just mix in a tiny amount of something to kind of not make it so pure. Also, this, this, this demon guy probably has better dental me, than me, okay? And he's a demon. Wh what does that say? Do I need to brush my f teeth? That's what it says. <laughs> I didn't know how prevailing of a thing it was to not put any basic material on your bases. This makes my heart yearn for unbased minis. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you like the channel and you want to support it, there are a number of ways that you can do that. Namely, a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards, like a Discord server where you and I get Hang out any day of the week and talk about your favorite kind of toast. You can also buy things like merchandise, like this new t-shirt called the Evil Paint Wizard t-shirt that I had drawn up by a local artist that looks freaking awesome. And you can also shop on Amazon with my affiliate link. All things linked in the description below. Subscribe or die! <laughs> and most importantly, don't forget to paint my minis!